Wonderful. Okay, yeah, so if we looked up through here, one of the things that we could do is if this was on an overcast day and we didn't have this light bleeding through, this was shot at a pretty a pretty big aperture probably. What about nine maybe? Uh, I don't remember even. It's really on there somewhere. You yeah. have a subject down in here and you're shooting at a lower angle, maybe from the ground and up. It's an amazing leading line. And so you could blur that through the back, you know, and then and then maybe keep some detail in these arches here. But I'm going to show yeah. you how I do some of that stuff on a road that I use, okay? Okay. Um, is there anything in particular in any of my images that you, um, hold on here, that you want to know that we start out with? Well, I need to look at the pictures. Uh, let's, look, let's look here. I'm going to try to get to mine. Let me hide this. <laughs> but yeah, that pathway is awesome. This is kind of this is. Yeah, I mean, really, I mean, your, your picture is amazing. I mean, really, if you f first even you know, the first uh, the first throw, uh, and just the effects. Yeah, this one for example. But but I mean, I'm sure. That some effects, it's not, it didn't get on, come out of the camera like that, right? No, oh, it didn't. Um, okay, I'm, let, let, let's let's look through let's look through a photo of mine, okay, and just start just start editing that. Is it okay? Yep. Okay. Hold on, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna fill up my cup of coffee. I'll be right back. Ten seconds. Okay, sure. I'll, I'll get one too, actually. All right, so are you there? Yes. Let's just look at a photo and try to get a feel for the thought process from last night, okay? So I'm gonna grab I'm gonna grab one out of Lightroom here. This is not a camera, okay? Um, all of these, are, but but they're shot. They're shot. I think this one. This one's probably going to be the one we edit. There's a lot of mistakes in it, but they're shot as the sun goes down right over her head. Mm -hmm. um, what's important to me is the negative space. Was that her head was framed in this light, okay? And that we had focus. Um, yeah. I've got to figure out a way to get rid of this lens flare, and I think we can do that. Yeah. And, and then we have to put something up here in the sky. The first thing I'm going to do is look at a possible crop on this. Uh, let's, let me see if Lightroom's going to cooperate here. It should. And I'm going to make something kind of dramatic or more dramatic. Let me shut this down. Do you mostly work on Lightroom or on Photoshop? Uh, no, I work on Photoshop, but in, and it's mostly Photoshop. But the simple things I do in... The simple things I really do in Lightroom. I like Lightroom's cropping tool better, um, and Lightroom yeah. is a more powerful program. It's it's set up so that it, it can make these powerful adjustments a lot quicker, but it also is more taxing on your system. Um, believe okay. it or not. So okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna select the crop here. We're gonna see what we can fix and can't fix. So. My first thing I want to do is I'm going to crop this probably down like this so it's dramatic, but it's going to leave a space up here where we can come in and most likely put a little bit of sunlight or sky. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, it's going to be this lens flare that's going to be my hardest thing to fix, and I've got to try to find a place. Um, we might have to clone that out, but I'm going to go look at it. Let me look at another image here. Uh, Yeah, we just had really, really beautiful light. Yeah. What time was that in, in the day? About, that, uh, this is about 7 p.m. Okay, so very close to sunset. Yeah, very close. We've just got a few things we've got to figure out. The first thing we have to do is get an image that we wish we had out of camera. That's what I always tell people. We have to get to an image we wish we had out of camera. Okay, we have to do it like yours, make it so it's technically excellent, which this one most certainly is not. It's, 
It's got this nasty amount of lens flow that we've got to figure out a way to get rid of it. There's also a lot of bugs in the scene. The bugs are easy. I'm just going to grab, I'm just going to grab a, a healing tool over here on the left and just get some of these specs out. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to go to this, uh, and we're going to start to look at this down here. I'm going to first of all, I'm going to see if I can't clone some of that out. I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to duplicate my layer. Are you pretty good? Do you have a good working knowledge of layers? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a huge help. I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to grab my clone tool. And I'm just going to try to start going over some of this lens flare here and see what we can do as far as getting it out. And it doesn't need to be perfect because I think what we're going to end up doing is putting a little bit of a, a multiply layer over the top of it to darken some of that up. Thank you. Um, so that's a huge help right there already. Mm -hmm. Let's grab some of this down here. Okay, I'm going to switch to, I'm going to flatten this. doesn't have to be perfect yet. And I'm going to switch to multiply layer. And we're going to go ahead and start to darken this bottom a little bit. The, the problem is, is I can still see a lot of that lens flare in her way, so that's not going to help. We've got to get something else figured out here. I might do... this <sighs> okay man we're kind of getting there Delete. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to I'm going to try to maybe blur some of this foreground out a little bit. We'll try that. I'm going to go to duplicate. It's not very often I use a blur software, but when I do, I use this Alien Skin Bokeh. Okay, so I'm going to pull that up, and we're going to try to try to blur this background here with a few things. We're going to try to blur it with contrast, and we're going to try to blur it with uh, with software. Okay. So I put that layer blur over there, over the bottom. It might just be something I'm not going to be able to get out, too. Sometimes I just, I know when to call it quits, but. Uh, so I'm going to duplicate again. I'll put a little bit of blur over this. I'm going to go to image adjustments, brightness, and I'm going to switch my contrast way up to maybe right there. Put a layer mask on it. And then take some of that contrast out down to here. Um, a little bit of a help. Edit, step back, duplicate. Whoop. Okay, this is going to have to work for now. Okay. So from here, what I want to do is I want to try to put a sky in up here where this is, all right? Mm -hmm. So let me show you how I do that. There might be a better scene to do this on, too. I haven't figured that out yet. Um, and we probably could put some of this guy in. That one's pretty, except for the trees. Okay, I'm going to grab a sky. So... What I do is I shoot my skies at an aperture of about four, okay, and then I purposely underexpose them. So here's what the skies look like out of camera. I don't use blur software on them. I switch my camera to manual using the same lens. This is on an 85 millimeter one two. Mm -hmm. I manually blur it and then I underexpose it to bring out this detail. What happens is that just snaps right into the scene we're going to put it into. Does that make sense? 
Okay, yeah. So I'm going to grab this guy. We're going to see what this looks like. Some of this, the sky detail in this scene. The, the problem we're going to run into are these trees up here up top. But we'll see if there's not a way we can put those in. First thing, if we look here in our in our other photo, our sun is some, somewhere right about here. And the scene I picked it is over here. So I'm going to... I'm going to crop this down, first of all. Actually, first thing I'm going to do, I'm not even going to do that. I'm going to go ahead. By default, Photoshop gives us this little table to work on that's right here. Do you see it? Yeah. When we move our scene, it cuts it off. So I need to make that bigger because I'm going to pretend we're working on a table. So I'm going to go to okay. canvas size, and I'm just going to make my numbers bigger. It doesn't matter how much bigger I make them. But now we have a nice table to work on so that we can adjust things. Okay? From here, okay. I'm going to grab my scene with her. I'm going to flatten this. And I'm going to pull it into here. And we're going to go ahead and just probably put that somewhere right about in there. Uh, my issue okay. is these trees up here, but I think we can I think we can get that worked out and we may just have to take them out completely. But I want it to be able to see this really directional light coming through this. From here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a um, layer mask, okay? And I'm going to take black paint. And across the horizon line, I'm going to paint this completely out. Okay? I'm going to move this just a little bit. But did, did you see that? Yeah. Huge difference, okay? But we start to have this come in. From here, I want to get a better bead, and I don't want to just take one exposure and put it on top of the other. I want to blend them to make it look realistic. So in order to blend this, I switch back to white on the same layer, and now I'm going to paint with a white brush at opacity of 14, and I'm going to start to bring this sky back in. That's going to tell me what I'm dealing with here as far as uh, the other uh, foreground, okay? Okay. Um, so I see a lot of mistakes coming through, bleeding through the original. I see uh, some right here. This is a foreground from the sky behind it. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to a brush at 100% opacity. And I'm going to take all that skyline out and start to paint in some of my detail that I knew was in there from the original scene. Just like that. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, from here, we have the sun starting to go in. But I need to look at bringing all of this up. I need to look at making this a little wider on top so we don't have this line because uh, composition-wise, this isn't going to work out. So I'm going to select my top layer. I'm going to grab a, a, an elliptical tool, and I'm going to bring it down to right about probably here. I'm going to select Edit, Transform, Scale, and I'm going to bring our composition up and see what starts to happen. It's going to stretch out a lot of these trees, but that's okay because we're going to get rid of some of them. I just want to make sure I have a really nice smooth gradient through this. Okay? okay. Well, now I'm going to select, deselect, switch back to black, and now we're going to paint all this out. And now I'm going to come up here and look. And I might even end up keeping the, keeping the original landscape from that sunset. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm going to come back in here now and blur with 15%. I'm going to keep it low and start to blend these exposures back in. But what I'm doing really is I'm just going by eye. I'm trying to see what I like, what I don't like, what's distracting, what's, what's unpleasant. But I think with this blur, we can kind of get away with something simple like this. We do need to keep this streaking out up here at top. Mm -hmm. So i got to come back through and get all that streaking out. Okay, and from here I can kind of make, I'm going to grab my background layer on the sun. Brighten it up. I'm just going to pull some brightness up on that. Now I'm going to go back to my original scene and look at some of this detail in here and see if I want some of this. It's not stretched out. But I'm gonna, I want some of this up in here, I think, and then we'll just paint out what we don't want. I'm going to go to Image, Adjustments, Brightness. Back it down. I want to get this black and darks up here as dark as I can because we're going to put those in over the darken layer over the top. So I'm going to take it back to this scene, put it over the very top, 
snap it in, okay, and switch to darken. I'm going to see where I like some of this stuff, if I do like it. Okay, and if I decide to keep it, I'm going to have to move my sun up a little bit, it looks like. Probably right there. I also see some things I'm going to need to get rid of from the sun. And I'm going to do that by going to duplicate layer with the sun. Okay, filter, liquify. And I'm going to start to push some of these down where I see that coming up behind that horizon line. Yeah. I'm just fixing mistakes using simple tools as I go. So now let's look. Now we got that out, okay? And now we have this darkened layer in with these trees. So now I can take this. I'm going to lower the lower even more of the darkness and see what comes in along that horizon line. From here, I'm going to mask off that darkened layer. I put on a white mask, control I invert it, and I'm going to grab a white brush and come up along the top and paint in some of that detail where it should be. Okay. Some of this we may not. Some of it we. In my want. This is going to have to be a little more gradual over here. Come in. I can I can put that in with a really hard brush, so it looks like bokeh, just like that. Yep. Now I'm going to look at lowering my opacity on this. I'm going to drop the opacity down so that all kinds of bleeds together like that. And what we've really got to fix is this, uh, this kind of up in here. Edit, step back, and try different opacities just to get it to look like bokeh. Okay, that's getting pretty close. Now let's crop this and look at the look at the overall image. We're still not done blending that skyline, but we're gonna. Okay, so we're gonna look at our composition right here now. The, the composition is completely different than what we started out with, but you see it's starting to take some shape. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Okay, so. The next thing we have to do is we have to give the idea of, of light. And I also have to fix my exposure from the front to the background. I'm going to go ahead and look at her. Uh, I see some blacks missing in her hairline here from where that's washed out and that's lens flare. I'm going, to, I'm going to look at a contrast adjustment on this front layer. So I'm going to go ahead and bump my contrast up probably to right about there. And I'm just going to look at the brightness too in case, until this starts to snap, all snap together. So let's try, I'm going to kind of match that there. From here, I'm going to grab a layer of transparent layer, okay, that I put over the top. I'm going to switch to white paint, 100% white paint. And what we're going to do is add a haze to bring this foreground and this back, this front, the foreground and the background together, okay, with light. So I'm going to grab this brush tool across the skyline at 100% opacity with white paint. Whoops, I need a soft brush though. I'm going to swipe straight across like that. From here, I'm going to lower the opacity until this starts to blend, almost like there's some depth to it. Okay, what that does is it brings the foreground and the background together, and it also gives me an opportunity to bring my subject out by putting a mask on that white paint and painting it off of her. Yeah. It separates her from the background. Okay. Okay. Next thing is to give more of a 3D effect and bring the sun into the foreground, and like it had some light bleed. I'm going to go 100% with the white paint, put the sun right in the middle, and dab right there. I'm going to back that layer down until I see the amount of detail I want out of the sun. And again, I'm going to paint that off of my model, okay? All right, now from here, we're going to do what we're going to paint with light. We're going to do that by adjusting exposure. I'm going to duplicate, filter, go to camera raw, lent, camera raw filter, and I'm going to back my exposure down on this. We'll see some, some stuff start to come out here um, as far as detail. 
and I'm going to click OK. I'm going to mask that off. With a black mask from the direction of the sun, I start in the middle of the sun, and I just come down through my subject like this. Mm, okay. Okay, and I'm going to kind of put light where I think light should be. And now we'll start to look. I'm still not real crazy about any of that lens flare and the stuff in there, but, but that's okay. This isn't probably going to be a perfect photo. And I think I could take some of that out with a film layer. From here, I'm going to go look at, we need to, we need to give the, the illusion of better focus, okay? Because we didn't have, I didn't have great focus in this. The other thing is I'm going to switch, I'm going to duplicate, switch to multiply and see if we can't take just a little bit more of that lens flare out. Probably right in here. I'm just going to take a lot of this focus off of down here. Okay, it's a little black, but that's all right. So I'm going to back this out and kind of look at it here and see what we've got. Yeah, I think this is nice. It's starting to take some shape. Yeah, the depth of field you've created is, is nice. Yeah. From, from the sun to the girl. It's, it's better. But now we're going to start to bring out some color in her dress, okay? I'm going to kind of take the focus off of her legs. Um, so let's, we'll flatten this image, and we're going to work from where it is now. So I'm just going to smooth this out a little bit. I'm even going to grab a liquify layer here, and I'm just going to give her a little bump. Liquify. Because uh, super skinny women do better on 500 px, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, from here, from here, I'm gonna grab. Let me get this little piece off of her leg here. Uh, I'm gonna bring out some detail in that swell of her hair. Okay, and to use that, to do that, I'm gonna use something called an extra sharp details brush from Jessica Drazen. And there's probably a lot of things out there like this, but she's a good friend of mine, and this is just what I use. And I just select extra sharp details brush in my in my actions, okay? And I press play, and up comes this little uh, window up top here. It looks like a high pass filter, probably. I haven't had time to figure it out, but I'm going to grab a white brush, and wherever I paint with white, it's going to bring detail out, okay? So I'm going to bring out detail in her sweater here. I think it's important because it'll show focus. You see it start to come out. Is that, is that, a, is that a tool that you purchase or, or what? Uh, you can purchase it, yeah. Actually, you can go to my website and then you use the discount code Jake. She made a thing just for my students. Um, okay. And, and I'll give you that here. So I'm going to put it over. I'm going to take this across the focus plane. Uh, pretty close to the focus plane just to bring out details where I think we need details. <laughs> And it really is going to give me, uh, it's going to give the illusion of better focus. Okay, so do you see the difference in that? Yeah. Okay, so. That's pretty cool. Now it's going to be time to, now it's going to be time to start, we start to look at color. One thing I want to do want to do is see if I can't fix that bottom. I wonder if I've got a better really the one thing keeping this from being a great image or a successful image is the bottom of the image. And so I'm gonna see if I have could possibly work. We'll see if I can bring this in there. You know, I think we're going to be okay. I think we're going to be okay. The next, okay. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, uh, I'm going to start to paint with a little bit of color, okay? So I'm going to duplicate this layer. I'm going to grab my sponge tool over here, which adds saturation. Saturation set to 51. Okay? 
And I'm just going to come in and, and gradually paint with color on this dress. I want this dress to come out a little bit more. I kind of want to stay clear of any skin tones, but I'm really kind of, it's just another way of painting with light. And I can't overdo it because I've done it on a separate layer. Yeah. And I don't want it to be too patchy. I can see it starting to get a little blur or a little blotchy. And you really want to make sure you go around and get the edges. I'm going to back this off a little bit. And from here, I'm going to lower my opacity. And then I'm going to mask it out. And with black, a real light brush, I'm just going to go over some of those patches there where you see that. Okay, so that's nice. I think she's starting to pop really well. Yeah, definitely. Big difference. And from here, I'm going to switch to... a. I'm going to switch to a uh, film layer. I might try to match. I'm going to see what these flowers look like if we matched with the dress, but I think it might be too much. And I like the way they match the, the, the highlights in this. But I am going to go to Image, Adjustments, Replace Color, and I'm just going to look at what a color change would do to these flowers. So I'm going to select on that yellow, and I'm just going to start to move my hue, and it's not going to do anything. It's just going to ruin it. So I'm going to cancel it. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to cancel it, and I'm going to look at an alien skin layer. Okay, I'm going to go to filter, alien skin, exposure 5. This isn't something I typically use unless it's really atmospheric like this, okay? Mm -hmm. um, this image uh, would possibly be a book cover, something that I would use for a stock image. It's not really a client image, because clients typically want to see faces. So I'm going to come in, uh, alien skin is a great, great uh, atmospheric film overlay, but typically I'll use Nick. And so I'm just going to look right here. I'm going to lower opacity. I'm always looking to see what I like uh, uh, constantly. And I don't see anything in here that really boggles my mind. I'm going to switch to uh, my signature, which when you see one of my images, it always has this over the top, okay? Um, mm -hmm. First thing I want to do is I'm going to adjust the contrast in her hair. Because that's something else I see. So I'm uh, adjust contrast the entire image. Right there, I'm going to control I. And then I'm going to come in and paint where I want that contrast. I kind of want it on the top because I see a little bit of a reddish hue. So I'm just going to paint contrast in there a little bit. And I kind of don't want it to look so stringy at the bottom. So there we go. Okay, so now this is this is the film layer I use on every one of my images. And even if I use Alien Skin over the top, I still finish with Nick. Okay, and this will be in your video. This is my recipe. It took me a long time to find it. This is Nick Color Effects Pro 4. And it's just going to add a nice contrast and a little bit of pop to any of the skin tones. But you can see that right there as it comes in. This is a little bright. I'm going to lower the brightness. And it adds a little bit of vignette, a little bit of warmth. Yeah. Okay, and, and it's typically my film strength is set at 7. And what this is, is it's a vent, film effects vintage. Number 14, film strength 7. Okay, and then the rest of this is just done to taste. I mean, as far as, well, as, far as your uh, um, saturation and all that stuff. But let's take a look at, I'll look at this. See, and that just adds something kind of nice to it. Mm -hmm. A lot more detail. I'm going to take that vignette out in the top corners with just a little bit of, of this here and probably some of this vignette at the bottom. I feel I'm not crazy about the bottom of this image. It's really distracting and it just doesn't come together well. One thing I am going to look at is a possible... Oh, shut my phone off. Uh, I'm going to look at a possible blur here, like we were shooting through some flowers, because that is something. And I'm really trying to think this out, thinking about what I don't like constantly and how I can fix it. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to see if maybe if we didn't pretend we shot through some of these flowers, but I can tell. I don't think. 
we're gonna have, we would have to use a lot of different colors. Yeah, it's just not something that will work in this case. Yeah, it looks odd. Actually. Yeah, it does look odd. Sometimes if we can lower it a little bit, really lower the opacity, I am going to just look. Yeah, I'm just going to have to live with it. But I don't know until I check. I'm not too proud. But overall, that's a finished image from beginning to end. You know, it's not ultra successful, but um, it is probably something an agency would take. So it's yeah. not a complete waste of time. Um, and then another one we can look at is... Super hot here. We gotta open the window. Where are you? Where are you at? I'm in Nebraska, right in the middle of the United States. Oh, okay. Right smack dab in the middle. Yeah. Do you know where Omaha is? Yeah. I'm just north of Omaha. In a little town, about six thousand people. Very small. Oh. Yeah. I grew up uh, just north of here, in an even smaller town with only a thousand people. Oh. No, it's kind of a weird place to do this. Um, okay, so uh, based on what you just call me, do, do you understand my thought process that if I don't like something, I'm just going to change it using a yeah. you think are very simple tools? This is this is the trick for me. I have to look at an image. And, and this isn't something that just came overnight. I really had to work at this. I had to look at people's images and figure out why I liked them, okay? And I had to figure out why I didn't like them. And yeah. really, I really studied as to whether it was just one part of the image and, and what I found distracting, what I didn't like, um, and figured out how to change them using really simple tools. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, sure. I think my lack of, of Photoshop uh, techniques is uh, is not helping because to me, either the shot is good or not good, I don't go ahead and edit it like you did, which which I think I should start yeah. doing. Yes, you should, and, and, and that's what most of the successful photographers are doing right now. You, you have to yeah. get to the point where you just realize that reali with, with reality and the current uh, camera technology, it's just not, it's just not possible. Yeah, I mean, I can think of many shots where if I changed the sky, at least it would have been a much better shot. Yes, what you want to do is you want to take something that's already incredible and just make it amazing. You really want the viewer to question how it was done, okay? And yeah. if you have to, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stealing anything here from anybody. I'm using my own images, okay, and I'm, I'm using my own, my own thoughts. So. Yeah. I think that's what makes it feel like it's credible. But, you know, for a very long time, people were saying, oh, he photoshops or they photoshop. I don't know of anybody in my very successful agencies that don't use it. And that really is their strength and their talent, is, is their ability to develop this. Yeah. And even if you yeah, look at photographers like uh, Ansel Adams, I mean, it wasn't their in-camera technique. It was how he developed the film when he created the zone system and stuff like that. It just, it was really warped reality. And, and that's kind of how we're doing it now. We're doing it with our own images, and we're taking our best stuff and combining it. And, and yeah. so, you know, a couple of years ago, it was, oh, but he uses Photoshop, and now it's, how do I use Photoshop? You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, sure, sure. so, and that's where the, just where the commercial industry is headed. Well, anyway, I'm going to, let me take this back in here. We can look at another image. But um, from, from what I just showed you, where would you like to go? I mean, do you want to see me do another one? I'm, I'm trying to figure out. Well, I'd like to see, uh, like, I'd like to see how you made effects on the on the girl itself. I mean, how you make the uh, the the focus more. The more focus you you made, you make it more uh, uh, sure. more pop out, I guess. Okay. So, are you more interested in portrait photography? 
Uh, I love portrait photography, yes, but I also like nature photography. Let's look at let's look at something like this. It's very simple, okay? We'll make it more dynamic out of camera. How does that sound? Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Out of camera, but let's just go with a close up, and I'll show you how I would edit this. It's a it's a pretty image out of camera, okay? But let's make it perfect. Let's look, or let's let's make it as good as we can. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to the bugs were so bad they were literally biting her. I'm going to take them off of her skin with just a simple <laughs> band aid healing tool here. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just going to go through and get all the bugs out. This photo. Then we'll start to smooth, and we'll. Start are, are her teeth in? Are her teeth in focus? I. I I'm, yes. I'm sensing they're not in focus. They are in focus. See. Oh. Okay. And it's shot at one point two. So it's. Uh, I don't know how. Oh. Focus. Be honest with you, because that's difficult. Right <laughs> 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 at one point two, yeah. uh, but somehow I lucked out. Um, how far? How far were you from from the model? I would say fifteen yards. Okay. Yeah, because that way I was able to crop and then figure out what my, you know, what my. And your camera is uh, what? It's Canon or Nikon? Uh, Canon. This is an uh, yeah. This is a Canon 85.12. Okay. So from here, I'm going to look at my composition. My composition is important in this too. And and I think I'm probably she's almost kind of looking off over here. I don't know. Mm -hmm. and, and because I wanted better focus and I didn't want to give up that light, I I put her in the middle, which is a big no-no for me. I typically never do that. But we're gonna I'm gonna go yeah. accept this. Um, Okay, first thing I'm going to look at is full light lead coming from this. This is really pretty up here, but I do want this to be more dynamic. And in order to do that, I'm going to grab white paint, okay, right up here. Grab my white brush, 100%, and we'll look at the direction our light was coming from. I think it was coming from right up here, it appears. So I'm going to put it where I think my sun was, and I'm going to dab, okay? I'm just going to bring a little, uh -huh. almost like we had this bleed come in from this background, okay? Yeah. Now, from here, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take it off of my model so that she pops from the background, and we get that nice little bit of depth. Mm -hmm. And it's going to add a little bit of a smoother gradient, too. Just makes it a little more pleasant up here. So I'm just making sure I get all of that off of her. Um, okay, so that's nice, and that helped. I like it. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at exposure. I would like more exposure on her face. I don't use a flash, but I'm really good at uh, um, lighting and post. I'm going to go to filter, camera raw, and that's the nice thing about shooting in raw. You can do that. I'm going to up the exposure for her, okay? And anytime I up exposure, I take my blacks down because the black is where you're going to find detail. So I don't want to lose detail when I have exposure. So I'm going to control I, flip this, okay? I'm going to paint with light. I'm going to grab my white brush 100% and from the direction of my light, which is here, I'm going to come down through my model. Okay, that brightens her up and that leaves some of the detail back here in the background. I might just run a little bit of, of that light over these flowers because they were illuminated, but the rest of it I'm going to leave. Now I'm going to look at some skin smoothing on her, and then we're going to sharpen. We're going to do some local sharpening. Duplicate. I'm going to go to Filter, Topaz, and I'm going to use a program called Clean on her skin. I'm going to come up here to Skin Even. And the strength doesn't matter because I'm going to paint opacity. So I'm going to go with something kind of heavy like that. Okay. Okay, and that's pretty nice right there, but from here I'm going to control I. I don't want to lose detail in her eye, so I'm going to flip it. I'm going to paint where I want it. So I'm just going to take a white brush, paint over her skin to smooth it, staying away from her teeth, eyes, eyebrows, anywhere where there's detail, get her neck. And then that's nice and soft. 
And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, uh, I'm going to try to blend in some of these patches. So I'm going to grab a transparent layer, okay, select white. Not select white, but I'm going to select this lighter color on her skin. And where I see these patches, I'm just going to dab over, okay, because that'll take that out and blend all this together. Okay. A little bit smoother. And it's okay to overdo it because once we do this, we're going to lower the opacity until we see some of that detail come in. We, we still want, I still want the look of some flaws, okay? And this isn't one of those really super close-up in-studio things. But that's nice right there. Yeah. And now let's go in and look at the eyes. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to sharpen the eyes. And we hit great focus here. I'm just going to grab my sharpen tool from the left. I'm going to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to go ahead and just grab this right over the top. She even got a bug bite on her eyelid, that poor thing. <laughs> oh, they were bad, man. They're bad here. <laughs> so I'm just going to take that off the healing brush. But see, I just ran the sharpening tool over those eyes like that. Mm. Big difference. I'm going to give it just a um. little bump right here in the middle. Now I'm going to grab extra sharp details brush from here. I never, I never want to use this on skin because I don't like what it does, but I am going to come down across the focus plane where I see some of this detail in her dress. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I'm going to back off the opacity. I just think it's a nice delicate detail that should be in the photo. So let's say right there. Hey, not done yet. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to grab my sponge tool. And back here, especially where I put in that white, I'm going to add some more saturation. Okay. That's going to give some depth back here, like she had this really amazing light coming through, which she did. Mm. Okay, and then really up through, uh, I'm going to back that off a little bit, but that brightened up the photo quite a bit, and we use color to do that. From here, I'm going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to grab my sponge tool again. I'm going to go across these highlights in her hair. I see some greens in here in her eyes I'm going to bring out very subtly. It's getting there, man. Yeah. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, uh, actually, I'm going to see if detail comes out with some more exposure on some of this. I'm going to lower it, grab my brush, black brush again. I think her face was almost a little overexposed. I'm still going to paint through this, but this one's going to be at 65, straight to the corner. And that looks like it's a little more accurate in terms of her... A sweater. I want to get some of this off. I think some of it looks washed out or overexposed. We want more of that focus on her face. So I'm really painting with light here. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the film layer on this, okay? So I'm going to duplicate Nick Filter, Color Effects Pro Full. And there it is. And you can see when the skin tone, can skin tone start to pop yeah. when we add that, but that's nice. And maybe even just a little bit of grain for texture. But we can add that in Lightroom. So I'm going to look at that. And there's only just, there's just one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to dodge and burn just a little bit across her hair on the top toward that light. Okay. 
Okay, so there's our finished Nick. I'm going to look at some brighter, high, some highlights across this. And this might not be something to keep, but I'm going to uh, take a, a transparent layer. I'm going to edit fill with 50% gray, and I'm going to switch to overlay. Okay, and then go ahead and grab my dodge tool. And let's come in and look at some of these highlights in her hair. This looks a little too... We should, we should be just a little blown out up here. Yeah. And like I said, it may not even be something with heat, but let's just try to bring it down through the direction of the light to see what it does. And then lower the opacity, just to add a little bit. I think like that. Does it help? That way it's not so warm. From here, I'm going to save as. Actually, I'm going to look at one of the things. There are her eyes right here. I'm just going to bring this out a little bit of a pop. And so there's our beginning image out of camera. Um, and it's going to be replaced here really quick. Should be. Yeah, man, Lightroom and GoToMeeting, just, they hate one another. Like, it just completely goes haywire. Yeah. I don't know why that is, but it's okay. I can bring it in through something else. There it is. This is our finished photo. So, in Lightroom. Yeah, huge, a huge difference from the original. Yeah, it's a big difference. And it's it's using very, very subtle things and common sense things. Like, which which direction is your light coming from? And then why did I put the white up here? I put it up here to, to show that we had more of a light bleed than we did in camera, okay? And it's also smooth and softer. Yeah. Than in the original. And it, it kind of keeps on the subject. The next thing we can do is, um, I'm going to come up here in Lightroom. And I'm going to sharpen everything so we can see her hair a little better, sharpen detail. And then I'm going to kind of, where it's, when it starts to clump there, the, the noise reduction will get rid of that. We just want to bring the noise reduction up a little bit. And then you can come in if you want to and mess with things like adding, uh, adding grain to her skin. You know, just a little bit of grain helps a lot. With, with detail, it covers up fragments. But overall, it's a really pretty image. And yeah. I don't think it's too terribly overworked. Well, I'm sorry, I didn't get why you would add grain. Oh, sometimes I add grain because uh, it puts a little bit of skin texture in, okay? And it also covers up, it can cover up banding when we go to print, okay? Okay. So if you had some intense place, grain can cover up uh, banding. And it also adds a little bit of skin texture. I don't go over the top, it's just a little bit, okay? If we start to go too much like this, uh, the only thing that's really used for is covering up massive mistakes, okay? But if you put a little bit of grain in something, it will print better, and it will also show better on the web. Okay. Yeah, but but very little. It's just to the point where you don't want to see it. But it, it can add a little bit of, uh, it adds a little bit of skin, uh, texture back into skin. Yeah. Um, I'm going to look at a little highlight bump here. But other than that, I mean, again, we just use very simple things to get to that. So, let's look at, what else did I have from her here? Uh, so, do you want to see me do another one? 
I'm sorry? Do you want to see me do another one, or do you have any questions on how to do something specific? Um, if, if, do you have the email where I sent you the uh, some of the uh, photos that I like? Or can I send you a link on here somehow? I do. Hold on. You sent me my photos, though, right? No, I sent you a couple. Uh, actually, I sent you maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, so seven, eight, 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 eight pictures. Okay, here they are. But see, these are. Oh yes. Okay. So yeah. But I, I was. I, there are some of mine, and there's some of other people's too. And. Yeah, if you look at the first one, uh, it's a portrait of a, of a guy with a hat. Uh, uh, this one is pretty similar, I guess, to the one you did. If you go to the first link. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is Jessica's. Let's go back and look at... That's so funny. No, the very first one, the uh, adventure or... Holy stupid cat. Yeah, this is, this is a great one. She, you know she's a good friend of mine, right? So is Jessica. Yeah. We talk all day long. Uh -huh. uh, Holly's in New Zealand and Jessica's in California. She's in Burbank. Um, but, you know, this is just, this is nothing more than just really great focus, okay? I mean, it's really great focus on on a camera. What did she probably shoot this at? One four? No, two two. Um and and just probably really soft light. So I don't think Holly did a whole lot on this as far as bringing this out, except for she was probably just bored sitting at home and grabbed her cat and this blanket, and she and she had a really soft light. Does that make sense that was behind her? Yeah. Okay, so this is really easy to process, but she did a lot of the same things we just did. She brought out things. I can see where she kind of might have overcrossed the tips of light with a little bit of dodging and burning on the tips. Do you see where this is really white? Yeah. Okay, and then just some sharpening over the eyes, but overall, uh, probably that's probably really close to out of camera. Now, Jessica's the first one we just looked at had a lot of Photoshop work. Uh, could you go up top the adventure by and you know, the, the the very first link? Adventure. Okay. Now this, yeah. Now this one is, is dramatic. I know it doesn't look natural, but it, I, I love the effect. I mean. I like it, but. But the things that was used to, to bring this out or make this look like this was a really a lot of local sharpening, okay? It was also some dodging and burning. Um, uh -huh. But I can show you something like that if you want. Yeah, please. Uh... Because you have access to these faces. Um, I'll show you how I did it. Let's see if, I, if Lightroom's going to let me bring in a file here. It may not, but it's it's really very similar to the way I did uh, the man, this guy. Okay, even though it was in that. Yeah, I mean the, the yeah the, the new thing yeah this this is great great uh, great photograph of course. But this it's very similar to the way I brought out a lot of detail in this. You can see similar similarities in skin texture to this. What makes this difference is that this was shot in in uh, controlled light, okay, and um, meaning there was a light in the background and this was in studio. Yeah. Uh, so let's. let's uh, this guy, all of his photographs are like that. Are just yeah. like that. Sure. No, but the new thing I learned I mean, today is normally I do any effect like sharpening or contrast to the whole image rather than what you just did is state parts, maybe, you know, just do some effects on the, on the model itself and not on the background. I'm going to show you a way to do this with this girl, okay, uh, because I, I'm not going to be able to get anything imported just yet, but we get something we yeah. can I'm going to shut this down, but let's, let's get this effect with this girl. On Lightroom. Nick Silver. Nick Silver. 
Basher, do you have Nick, Nick Silver effects? No. Okay. Uh, I'm going to show you something because there's that's probably one of the ways he's doing this. Let's grab this one. Let me see what else I have. I don't think any of these are going to work for that. Okay, yeah, I'll give you an example. Okay, I'm going to open this in Photoshop, okay? Uh, first thing that, that, that he's doing is he's, he's using a huge clarity bump, okay? He's taking a huge clarity bump on that photo. And, and there's a couple ways to adjust clarity. And it's not gonna, it doesn't work as well on a feminine face like this because you don't want to, you don't want to exaggerate imperfections on her. You know what I mean? You want to diminish them. But on of the character... Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, mean I, I know it's not a, it's, it's a dramatic shot. I mean, it's, it's not something that you normally... Right, uh, do. but on this, I'll show you how we would do it on this. So I'm going to open it in Photoshop. <coughs> oh man, this is just not working for me here. What's going on? Try something else. Let me grab James's. Uh, see what I have in here. I think I have a full size of James that we can work on his face close up. Right here. Because I'm going to accentuate this image. Um, because I could have I could have done it over the top like that. Uh huh. And I'll show you how we can do that. Let's go ahead and pull the photo up. Okay. So here it is. Let's look uh, close up at this compared to this. Um, this also has a color layer over the top of it, okay, almost like a grunge. But what this is, is they took uh, something in Nick Silver, okay. I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to open Filter, Nick Collection, Silver Effects Pro 4. We're going to go look at something. This is a black and white software. But we're going to use sculpture, structure in the black and white to put over the top of that. And this is going to help you get that. This is going to help you achieve that look dramatically, okay. So let's start out in this right. over, but let's look at something called structure. I'm going to go ahead and take the structure way up on the photo. Mm -hmm. and I'm 100%. Okay, right there. And I'm going to click OK. We're going to put that over the top of this. Oh, boy. That's okay. We'll keep going here. I might, I'm going to shut down Lightroom. do it again. Open lips. Because you're using Windows. <laughs> I'm I know. surprised you're not using Well, I have a Mac, but I only use the Mac for listening to music. I have a new MacBook Pro. My problem is, is I, I, I'm so stuck in my ways, I just don't want to switch. I can't take the trauma of switching right now. I might switch, <laughs> in, the, I might switch in the winter when I'm not so busy. But right yeah. now, it's a major disruption in my workflow, so I'm just going to take the bugs with it. I'm going to go ahead and go to Nick Collection, Silver Effects Pro 4 again, which is a black and white software. If I can get it to open, there it is. I'm just going to take my structure all the way up. And it's going to put black and white over this. And we're going to look at what it does. Okay, and do you see what it added here in terms of all this detail and texture when I took that structure all the way up? Yeah. Okay, let's go to, let's switch this to a darken layer, okay, and start to look at this compared. Okay, there it is with it. Hold on here. I'm gonna I'm actually gonna take this all the way up. I'm gonna switch it back to normal or to overlay. And then I'm gonna lower the opacity on this. Okay. And then I'm gonna control I. So I'm gonna switch it out, grab my white brush, okay, and anywhere I want to add that structure of clarity over that black and white, 
I'm just going to go ahead and paint over Do you see it becoming more dramatic? Yeah. Now, this was already done to that, so before it's much softer. But all I'm doing is, is I'm taking uh, Nick Color Effects Pro 4, okay, or a uh, silver effect, and I'm, I'm adding structure to the face. So I'm really accentuating uh, things that you see in this, because look what happened. I mean, they really over-exaggerated his pores. He's got a, a, a neat catch light here, okay? And then if you yeah. take this, and we add, let's go to a uh, transparent layer here and kind of look at the strong colors in this, which is kind of a tan or a gray. And it's mostly gray. I think he was just a tan guy, probably. But let's look at what a color does over the top of this. I'm going to go to image, oh, sorry, edit, fill, color. I'm here on a nice kind of amber brown. I'm going to put it over the top of this whole image. Okay, from here let's switch to soft light and see the difference this this makes. You see it kind of add that rich tone to the whole thing? Oh, wow. yeah. Back it off. So again, we're starting to get all of that, all of that in there and start to get that kind of look. So sometimes a brown like that can really make a huge difference. The other thing is, uh, once he was in here, he probably also did a huge clarity adjustment in Lightroom, which is another thing that will give you your effect. Let's try messing with your clarity brushes. Mm. Nice thing about adding this brown is you can come in and then anywhere it's too dark, we can go ahead and paint it off and it will leave that brown, okay, on the skin tones. Yeah. yeah. You see how we're starting to get that, though? Yeah. It's brown and it's structure. There's another way to get that. So if we go to Lightroom, and let's take this pretty girl. It's not going to work the same on her as it would have a man with a lot of character in his face. But what this is, is I'm going to go to my brush in Lightroom, and I'm going to paint over her face completely. Okay, I'm going to zero everything out. Exposure, highlights, everything to zero, color balance. And I'm going to up the clarity. The clarity takes all of that, all of the imperfections, all the things in her face, and it accentuates it. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's really the effect that we see on this man in here. It's, it's just a huge clarity, huge clarity adjustment. Yeah. So for that, that's what I would that's what I would recommend. And those are just a few of the ways. A lot of people use Nick Silver because it's a it's it's a much better processor to get that. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it's just a kind of a neater overall look. And then you can see the sharpness. And that's honestly uh, how they how they come about doing that. Okay, how about the uh, uh, did you see the uh, uh, the blue, the blue picture. Which one is it here? Which would be the... I guess the, all, uh, all of these. But it can by floor. Not this. Not, not this. The one uh, above it, I think. Uh, blue eyes and autumn leaves. No, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, what's that? It? Yeah. This one? No, it's the one, two, three, four, fourth link. Yeah, this one. This one. Yeah, we looked at this one, but this one's with the cat. I think this is really just. No, 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 not, not the cat one. The the blue one. The the one before that. Oh, okay. Let me get it. It's the fourth link. What? Yeah, barrica, barrica or something. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I did see that, and this is really cool. What this is is, is kind of an, an underexposed thing, but let's let's find something here, and I'll show you. This is something you can learn to mess with. I'm going to try to find a landscape here that will work on this, even though I don't know if I have one similar to it, but I can show you how that was done. It, it's really just 
Let's look at the photo because it's underexposed, okay? What it have you have a lot of highlights in this that are going to expose right, okay? So this is really made up of a bright light coming from here that's shining on all these highlights, okay? So when you underexpose it, you're going to get all these blacks. But look at this. If we take that photo, let's take this one of just the sunset. And we go down here to, I'm going to pull some of, this, some of this yellow out or some of this saturation. Let's go down here to Split Tone and Lightroom and look at our highlight color, okay? So if he had that, that photo on it, and it turned out uh, looking like this, we just add some blue to the highlights. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, and then here in the shadows, we can add some blue too. And he just messed with it till he got this intenseness that's in that you see in this. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then probably a vignette. But this this shot's probably pretty close to how it looked at a camera, except for of course this vignette was added down here a little bit to get it to blur. But it's more composition. The other thing that makes this really powerful is the composition. I'm going to show you something here. Let's go to rectangle and follow his lines. File, save as, desktop, save. But you can see how we added that blue to this. Even if the situation, that, his, his image could have been completely yellow, and he probably just likes blue better. So he just took it and he split toned it over the top. And the other way you can do it is just with your color balance. He could have grabbed it with the color balance out of the camera and just brought it over to blue. Um, okay, so let me grab this. Open with. The problem with Photoshop is there's a million ways to do one thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 zillion. <laughs> well, well, as coming as looking at this, I mean, whether or not that's how he did it, but like I said, if you look, his composition here is very important. Uh, his skyline comes across this top third. Do you see that? Yes. And and that's one of the important things about this photo is really more the composition. When I see it, I see that, and I also see balance. So when we see this composition, that's amazing because he has decided whether he's going to show more sky or more foreground. So even though it didn't look like this at a camera, I mean it it it, it 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 was a it was a nifty crop. It was a great crop that's compositionally correct. He's got these two lines right here, bam, bam, that also come straight up the center and end right yes. here. So you've got balance and then a perfect skyline. It's really amazing composition more than anything. The blue is very easy because all you can do is take this photo, no matter what color it was, pull the saturation out and split tone it. It's nothing more than a black and white photo with a blue over the, over the highlights. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That was just a decision for him. Is he like blue? I mean, we could just as easily take this, okay? Watch this. Image adjustments, a saturation. Pull all the saturation out of here. Take a transparent layer like this. Pick a color. Let's say we want uh, to make it uh, orange. Okay. Uh, we're going to edit, fill this with orange. Let's, uh, let's go. Okay. And then we're going to switch to soft light. And there it comes. You see, now it's, it's orange oh. blue. Now let's take this, oh, okay. this top layer and go to image, adjustments, saturation, hue, and let's just walk, look through the hues, okay? And we're getting back to where he was right when we go to blue. Okay. Okay, so very simple. Um, and he just decided that he wanted this to be blue for composition. Okay. And you can back that color off from here, and then you start to get your vignette back. All right. Mm -hmm. so all the, but this is a technically excellent photograph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see your point. Yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is composition. It's way more than that. And then, and then you know, blues. And then, so once you're done, and he adds a blue or a dark blue like that, then from there you can even take a saturation brush and go through up here and and start to add things where you want to add them. Okay. Darken your exposure. How about? 
And so, look at something else here. Oh, this is mine. Now this one is uh, this one's amazing. Okay, do you want me to make this for you? Yeah, that would be great. Uh, I have the raw files on this. Let's do. I'm trying to think of how I would get to them. Okay, just stay on the computer, okay? Because I'm going to exit this meeting, and I'm going to try to grab it that way. Okay. Stop showing screen. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, man, I got that file. I'm going to take a quick break. I'll be right back. Give me one minute. Okay. Okay? All right.
Fish, are you there? Yes, yeah, here. Yeah. Sorry, man. No problem. got this horrible cold. I can't shake it. All right. So I've got our file in here. And this isn't the exact one, but it's the raw right out of the camera. So tell me when you can see my screen and we'll get to work. Can you see my screen? Yep. Awesome. So this is the original, the original one, yeah? Well, this isn't the original one, but this is from that shoot. It's from the same. So let's look at her. Um, let's look at her facial expressions a little bit different than this. Let's look at the model down. So this is what we have right here. This is the finished. And, and uh, this is just a different facial expression, okay? So she's looking down. What's important is where I put her, okay, I put her between this line of trees, and it was really overcast this day. First thing I'm yeah. going to do is I'm going to uh, hide this, and I'm going to crop, okay, for composition. So I, I kind of like this composition, although I want to get rid of some of this over here and keep this balanced right in the middle. Mm -hmm. and probably come 
right down here like that. And then we're going to take it into Photoshop. It looks like we have pretty good focus. Not great, but we shot, I shot a 1.2. So what's the reason for including a 1.2? To get that 3D depth look. Okay? To get okay. really big blur in the front, really big blur in the back. Okay. From here I'm going to duplicate. What I don't like is this light over here. Oh, my dog. I got to grab this <laughs> What? You have a dog and chickens there, yeah? <laughs> All right, sorry. Okay, so uh, I'm going to get rid of this space over here because if we look in this other photo, this little bit of light probably isn't there because I found it distracting off of screen. Do you see it gone? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Take it. Okay. And let's get rid of it. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this background layer. I'm going to take, we have two layers. I'm going to mm -hmm. take the background layer. I'm going to transform, edit, flip horizontal. Okay, so back there, that's flipped now. I'm going to mask this off. I'm going to grab black in 100%. And I'm just going to come through here and paint some of this out. Because what I want to show, I want to show bleed coming right here through this, through this main part. Okay, so did you see okay. that? Out? I want it to look like we had light, only light coming through here. Okay. So, again, that's very simple, very easy. Now I'm going to grab a transparent layer. I'm going to grab white paint. Okay. And let's pretend I had sun coming right here. Our sun is really bleeding right to the back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put that right in the center and dab. Okay, so there's our light lead. I'm going to mask black. I'm going to take it off of Morgan. And this is really a lot of blending. Okay, I'm going to lower the opacity on this. I'm up here like this. I'm not going to do the greatest job, but I'm going to do a pretty good job. Start to blend this out a little bit through here. I'm going to bring a little bit of it back in, not much, just a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to grab another transparent layer, 100% opacity. We're going to do this again. This time it's going to be tighter, okay? Right there. Okay. And now we have that little bit of light coming through up top. I'm going to just kind of blend a little bit more of this white from the original foreground in here and a little bit into her hair. Okay, but do you see the depth that added when you put it in conjunction with oh. uh, that, that plane of focus? It's, it's big, and it almost makes it look 3D. Yeah. So from here, I'm going to come up close and just look at a few details that would make this possible. I'm going to paint all this white off up here along the top. Okay, so there's the depth. We have the depth in our image. The next thing I'm going to do is look at exposure, okay? This uh, yellow in her dress is blown out. I'm going to duplicate image filter. I'm going to go to camera raw filter. And I'm going to lower my opacity, okay? And I'm only looking at her dress. That's all I care about. And I'm going to up my vibrance and saturation, okay? And now I'm going to control I. I'm going to take a white brush. And over the yellow, I'm just going to start to paint some of this in so it's not so blown out. And a lot of it always, again, is blending. So I'm going to take some black and take off a little bit of what I did just so it's almost like a gradient that goes to the top, okay? So I got the yellow back in. This is it's starting to look a little bit better. Let's look at her eye now. Next thing is her eye. This is kind of a blurry shot. 
but that's okay. I can sharpen it up. I'm going to grab Band-Aid to smooth out her skin a little bit, just some minor imperfections. And now I'm going to duplicate and sharpen the eye. Do that on a separate layer so we can back it down better. Okay. Next thing we're going to do is paint with some color. I'm going to grab my saturation brush over here, sponge tool, saturate 51. I'm just going to run this across the bottom. Okay. And I'm also going to take this right through where I think our light should be coming through on the top of this. Probably a little longer here. And that's really it, man. It's, it was very simple to make. Okay, I'm going to also duplicate, uh, do a film layer over the top, and this is how we came to this photo. Yeah, but really amazing, the simple things, how it makes it pop out. I mean, very simple. I mean, you know, I don't think a lot of people would think of white paint. And a lot of my friends said, don't show anybody that because it's too simple and everybody's going to, well, I don't care. I'm so branded. It's really <laughs> because the, the, what it is, is the computer, you and I see white paint as white paint. So you can hear somebody say, oh, they put white paint on it. Don't do that. Uh, to the computer, it's exposure. Okay. Yeah. So it's showing them. If we use that really soft brush, it makes it look like we had a lot better light in here, that we were really planned this, like we had to be here when this light was coming through these trees. And, and it's really, it's a pretty neat effect that is so, so simple. Yeah. And, now keep in mind when I'm shooting this, and I put this above her like this, I know that I'm going to do that. Okay? Okay. And so you have to have the same mentality. I know I'm going to dab some white light there and have it come through, and that's what I'm thinking. The client doesn't know it. Nobody else knows it. I wonder why we're there. Yeah. Oh, what the end effect is going to be. And so that's why we do it. And that's a finished image. Oh, wow. So are you a, 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 a private photographer? I mean, that's what you do? Yeah, that's all I do. Okay. And I book, I shoot seven nights a week, literally. I shoot tonight. Uh, I shoot seven days a week, but I only shoot in the golden hour. So uh, I do it full time. And then I've also been teaching. I teach almost every day. And uh, I've only been doing it for two and a half years, so it's really changed my life. What were you doing before? Uh, I was in the jewelry business for a lot of years. I worked for Cartier and Neiman Marcus. Um, and, you know, that we had a, the economy kind of crashed here in 2008, and I lost my job, and I, I went into a pretty long depression. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do for a long time. And uh, I started drinking pretty heavily, <laughs> and... <clears throat> I went into rehab for alcohol when I came out. I just grabbed a camera, you know, wow. like three years ago, and people said you're really good at it. And then it was about two years ago I learned layers in Photoshop, and now here I sit. So I'm just very wow. good. And, and I good love you. Yeah, I love what I do, and the people are amazing, and I just couldn't be happier. I just hope it lasts, you know. I hope. Uh, well, from the, from the looks of it, it, it sure it sure should. I mean, you're a very good photographer. I hope so. I I just I just love my life. I really do. The people in it are incredible. The, working with other photographers and the family. I mean, once in a while, you run into a pain in the ass, you know. But it, it, you're gonna, and it makes it all worth it, really. So I don't mind. Yeah. But it, Thatcher, it's really about for me when when my when my mind I'm going through it. I'm looking at okay, I don't like this. Why don't I like it? Can I fix it? And then accentuating things that I do like. Like I liked the yellow dress in contrast to this. So I accentuated it by making it more yellow. Okay. Um, and so it was so simple. It's just a one step. I just back it down, mask it out, put the effect where I want it with a simple brush. Okay. Uh, yeah. her eyes, so I sharpened the eyes. I, I made things. Uh, our eye is drawn to detail. And so you can take an eye through an image with detail and with color. Some people will sharpen an entire image. It, it, that's not how you do it. you got to sharpen it to where you want your eye to go. They'll add color to an entire image. Add color to a portion of the image for a reason. Where do you want the eye to go? Um, is your eye coming off screen, and why is it coming off screen? And where do you want it to stay? Yeah, yeah, but, 
Yeah, that's what I was doing myself, is doing yeah. it for the whole picture. Yeah, it, but that's okay. I mean, I mean, that's okay, but you only want to add it to certain places. We can even, there are several ways we can draw an eye into this. We can even take this image and we can just sharpen with color. So let's duplicate and let's sharpen this little piece of her dress and do it with color, not with a sharpening tool, but saturate. So let's take our saturate here and let's only add color to these straps. And then set out and look at the difference because it's really in the minor details. Okay? Yeah. So uh, we're we're not we're not sharpening with with a sharpening tool, even though it says called a sharpening tool. We sharpen in other ways. And now let's back out and look. You see the huge difference? Yeah. Yeah, and we sharpen with Definitely. yeah we sharpen with color, and there's all kinds of ways to. Mm. And we can you know we can add a little bit of color just to her lip if we wanted to. I mean, it's going to be over the top, but it, but that accentuates things. But do we want to see the lip that much? We have to make that decision inside of the photograph. Um, it does it serve a purpose. And yeah. so that's, that's kind of how you come to that. Um, I think the next thing is, man, I, first of all, I'm not feeling that great. If we can do, reschedule another one, I'll work with you two more times if you want to. I, I want yeah, actually, I was thinking the same thing. If you like, what I'd like to do, I mean, I, I honestly don't care if it's exactly four hours or less. It, it doesn't really matter to me. It's, what matters to me is I learn something new. That's so what, what I, what I, that's if what I can suggest, if I can suggest this, I'd like to take uh, a photo myself, a, a yeah. similar maybe setup or whatever, yeah. and try to do the same effects, and then in the next session, just tell you what my problems were. Uh, uh, and and help if, if you can help me fix them, and that would be great for me. I mean, that would be even if, if half an hour or one hour more, that would be excellent for me. Perfect. But I yeah, I want to give you more than that. So let's just uh, I got to come out ahead of this, or I won't be able to sleep. So let's do that. Okay, you have another you have another session coming up. Was it October second or something? Uh, we haven't scheduled the, the, I've asked for the uh, uh, second one, but you haven't confirmed as far as I know. Let me grab my book really quick. Hold on. Because it's definitely not October 2nd, because October 2nd is... Uh, I don't know why I thought that, but I have you down for another date, um, and I might just... Yeah. Uh, I mean, Friday the 3rd would be good, but again, it depends on your schedule. Yeah, let me look here. Or, or the weekend after that, because, I mean, I'm traveling all of next week, and I won't have time to, uh, to take a photo. Uh, so if we could make it the 10th, 11th, something like that. How about, I have, I have schedule, would it have to be a weekend? Uh, no, it doesn't. Okay, I'm wondering if the 15th would work. Sure. Okay, yay, that's perfect. So I'm going to get you down to okay. the 15th at the same time. So at the same time, or, or would you rather do it uh, later, later on? Uh, it's up to you. It's up to you. I don't mind getting up. I don't mind uh, getting up a little bit earlier. I've just been feeling a little under the weather. Today was kind of tough, but I feel great. I mean, but if you want to do it at 945, just call me at 945. I'd do that. Okay. Um, Just for you. I, I I really cannot tell what what I'll be doing on the fifteenth. So. Uh, Just send me an email a few days before. Okay. All right. I'll send you an email. I mean, the fifteenth is is confirmed. I'll just send you an email. I it will be either be ten o'clock your time or maybe just an hour or two later on. That sounds good, man. And you can just FaceTime me anytime. Okay. Okay. That's perfect. All right. And. Uh, that's it. Hey, Basher, I'm going to take this tutorial, this video tutorial today, okay? I'm going to upload it, but right now I'm going to send you one of somebody else's, okay? But okay. It has some things in it that we didn't cover, and you can just look it up, okay. okay? All right. Well, let okay. me, let me, this is from Deji, and I think this was a good one. This is more about how I put in my skies, okay? Because I don't think we covered that this well today. So what's your email again? It's uh, Hantuli, H-A-N-T-O-U-L-I. Yeah, that's it. I'm sending you a video aside from this one. This is going to cover different things than we covered today, okay? So just download it and watch it. I think the audience okay. is good on this one. 
and then I'm going to upload yours and send yours as well. Okay, okay that'd be perfect. So that one's on its way, and that's uh, all right, man. That's it for today. So I appreciate you allowing me to make that mistake. I'm pretty embarrassed, but I haven't made one. No, yet. no problem, uh, no problem. I appreciate your time. Uh, you've been very helpful. No problem. Let me know if you need anything.